Hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. In this video we are going to take a close look at a mini PC that has a lot of power. Yeah, the box itself already says it, over there, gaming PC. It's just I think a basic enclosure they're using, because when you're looking at the box there is no information whatsoever. Not even anything on the bag itself, so yeah, so let's just open it up. So, when you're looking on AliExpress, there are so many different things you can buy. But I just want to see and to buy the most powerful ones out there. Take consideration, when you're seeing this video, there's even maybe a newer version out there that is even more powerful than the one I'm holding now. It goes so fast in the technology. Nevertheless, what we're going to get is a lot of Plastic Fantastic. On the box it looks very fancy, but in this case... It's a very cool design, or that's what I think of it, but it's a lot of plastic. Let's see what we're going to get more. We're going to get the foams that hold the system in place. And underneath that we're going to get all the necessary cabling for attaching another hard drive in the inside. The power cable. Then we're going to get ourselves the base for the device. And the power supply itself. And the power supply is a quite beefy one. And in total, let's see what we're going to get. Let's get my little sleeve to begin with. We're going to get ourselves a 19 volt 7.89 amperes. So that is quite a beefy one. If you need to go to be replacing this in the future, I think you can always find a new one. But we're not going to replace the whatsoever. We're just going to take a close look at the mini PC and what we're actually going to get. In here, we're going to get a bag with screws because we need to use a screwdriver, a very tiny one, a Philips screwdriver, to get this plastic base on. Yeah, what I didn't mention before, so when you're getting this device, when you're looking on the picture, it looks all very cool and fancy. And I think it will be very cool when you're going to display it. But man, this thing is so, like I say, not a cheap feel, but it's just this plastic. Let me smell it. Oh, oh man, I don't know what it is, but this new stuff smells so good. Oh, I can do this all day. The overall design, I think it looks pretty cool. But let's take a close look at all the connections. At the front, we're going to have two USB connections just to the row, nothing fancy, and they are positioned in an OK position, and of course the on and off switch over there. Next up, we're having a lot of different connections at the back. For example, a lot of USB ports and two HDMI. So everything has been put to the back, including the microphone and the headphone, the RG45, and four USB 3 to row ports, and that is more than enough so far for most users. Two HDMI connections, no display port, type C, and of course the input for the power supply. At the front we will find this beautiful RGB LED. Unfortunately there is no way of adjusting this or there is no software so far I know that you can have like something of a Razer Gromar going on. So that is also basic and nothing can be changed out. The device itself comes with the Intel Core i9 12900H and Alder Lake having a max TDP of 45 watts. The manufacturer is JHZD. Nevertheless, we're having a bus specification of PC Express 4.0. That brings us to the memory DDR4. In total, 16 gigabytes has been implemented. DDR4 3200 running on 600 megahertz and having two of the same kind of memory sticks. Let's get take a close look at the graphic card. This is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti and laptop GPU. So this thing is, has a TDP of 60 watts, 4 gigabytes of memory, GDDR6. And that's actually what we're getting when it comes to the specifications. So when it comes to indie games and two-dimensional games, one of my favorite ones, it's completely, let's uh, say, an overkill, this specification list of the mini PC. And the games will run perfectly on high settings whatsoever. <laughs> With indie games, we do have quite difficult ones to run when it comes to say low-end PCs, but this i9 combination with an RTX card in it has no problem whatsoever running this on the highest graphics and full HD. The 
Next up, a three-dimensional game, but an older game, Saint Road 4. I've been testing this game out on many PCs, and I can tell you, you will be surprised how some of them will struggle. But a combination of this fast i9-1200 series in combination with the RTX, we finally can play this game on Full HD and everything set to Ultra. F every setting absolutely maxed out, this system is managing to run it actually. And it's quite surprising to be honest, because I have been trying this forever now. With the three dimensional games, let's start off with one of my favorite games, Chris Bandicoot, the trilogy. And with this particular game, we can play it on 1080p, everything setting to ultra, no problem whatsoever. Let's move on to some other games like Street Fighter 6. I just put it on full HD, every single setting to high. And to my surprise, it seems to be working quite well. In combination with this two CPU and GPU combination, we can just play the latest fighting games like Street Fighter 6 and beautiful graphics, no problem whatsoever. Another game that works perfectly on this is the God of War series. But take consideration that I needed to put it on original values when it comes to the settings. So in other words, just to say normal settings, if you're going to be upscaling it, you're going to have not a great overall experience when it comes to the game. Everything is different, boy. Try not to dwell on it. Yes, sir. More tracks? Yeah, but they're too round. Could be a wild boar. For the horizon, we are getting a high and medium mix and still having an amazing 60 FPS going on. One of my favorite racing games to play that seems to be running just fine on this mini PC. Turn around when it is safe to do so. But opening it up is quite easy. You need to remove two screws at the back and we can just lift up this plastic case. Let me mention in the beginning, it's a lot of plastic fantastic and I find a little bit of a bummer. So we do have the bracket over here and they're already implementing the screws and everything else in the package. So you just need to assemble your basically here of 2.5 inch drive, can be an SSD or a hard drive. So this is actually the beast. This is what we're going to get in the inside. And yeah, it's nothing special to be honest, but what I did like about this machine, and you already can see that we do have the option for an extra NVMU, and that is pretty damn cool. So we have the option to add another one, so we're going to get double the storage capacity. The one I'm having over here is not a huge one, I think it's 256 gigabyte. I only want to have Windows. Yeah, maybe in the future we'll upgrade it to 2 terabyte or 1 terabyte to have like maximum storage capacity. Okay, do you have the slots for dual channel memory? I choose for just 16 gigabyte. And yeah, I think you have a couple of options out there. I think all the way up to 64 or maybe 128. It's absolutely crazy. But I didn't know what kind of brand and what kind of speech we're getting. So I just wanted to see actually like what are we going to get. And maybe later on replace it with different because we're having this U UE Tri Tiger. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's DDR4. So unfortunately, there's no DDR5 in here. 
It's quite disappointing. Not a big of a deal, in my opinion, but it's a biggie. Ah, I wish we have DDR5 at least. I don't know if there are good brands they're selling over there, but this is an 8GB DDR4, 3200. Yeah, this is the one that we're going to get, but maybe in the future we'll replace it with more. I think 32 gigabyte. But let's take a close look at this other device because I'm really curious how it all has been assembled. All right, there we go. So what I do like, it comes complete with a nice cooling element. But the downside to this is I cannot really tell what it is actually. So that's unfortunate. Huh. I should look it up. Maybe I get myself one of these things too on my other PC. And underneath, at a weird position, they implemented over here. Hey, my my screw. They implemented here the Wi-Fi module. And they will give us an Intel module over here. So that is absolutely great. Oh, but there is a lot of numbering over here, but not some clear information that I can say one, two, three, what it actually is. Everything seems to be looking clean and brand new. And oh man, there was a little bit of part here that is very sharp. But beside that, we're looking at the main board itself. It's just a main board inside of a freaking case. Like it's this, it's 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 all plastic, fantastic. Nothing really fancy. We have reviewed many models that are absolutely way better when it comes to the NVMU, but also everything like the RAM. We do get some weird brands, no Kingston Samsung that I'm normally used to. But if they are good quality, yeah, to be honest, I don't know because I've never heard of those. Starting off with some PlayStation 2 and my favorite game, Tekken 4. Nevertheless, we're having absolutely amazing overall performance with PlayStation 2 and you can even upscale it to higher resolutions if you want to without any problem. <laughs> So what is really convenient if you're going to be loading up PlayStation 3 games with such a powerful chip, the loading times are so significantly shorter compared to let's say the low end chips I've checked out in the past. And also when it comes to the resolution here we can even upscale it a little bit and getting amazing PlayStation 3 emulation performance. That will be your ruin. Tonight will be your last, Prince of Darkness. Die, monster! You don't belong in this world. PlayStation Portable, no restrictions, we can put it in the highest setting and everything set to the maximum level that makes these games look absolutely stunning.
where we have amazing overall performance with Xbox Classic. You can see that it struggles with Xbox 360, also depending what kind of emulator version you're using and what kind of game, in other words, compatibility and of course CPU-GPU combination. But it will push this thing to the limit. But with a lot of power, we have so many cool emulation possibilities. With the Redream Emulator for Dreamcast, we can even put it on the highest settings, no problem whatsoever. GameCube set to 4K resolution and with a device also like this, we can just push this to the limit. Take consideration, I've been tweaking with it with some time, even putting some extra filter over it, but then I did get some, let's say, overall problems. But I just find that with the 4K resolution in this particular settings, we have absolutely great performance. You got boost power. Next up, the Wii emulation, and I was to check out with some solid colors, 4K resolution, and I do see some dips now and then. It's not to the point I find it unplayable, but take consideration with the Wii, we need to do some more tweaking in the future with different kind of games. <laughs> So where it comes to the AAA games, there are a lot of stuff that seems to be running on this. Also in emulation, there is so much we can even play and upscale. But when it comes to the case design, hmm, played a little bit of a plastic fantastic case, strange airflow where the heat is going to be blowing from the bottom part up. But okay, that's maybe a design choice. Beside that, it's a kind of cool piece of equipment, but it also makes a lot of noise. Thank you all for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell, it would be great to see you in the next video.